John F. Kennedy is really interesting on the Vietnam story because what he says is in effect any Western power that seeks to defeat this revolution by military means is destined to lose. But there's a paradox because that same Kennedy expands American involvement substantially. We were hoping that the United States would stay and defend Vietnam. Kennedy certainly reassured us. He was beginning to up the ante. He was sending more equipment, more arms, more advisors. In the early part of 1964, Johnson, I think, is getting frustrated. And I think he's decided from the day he comes into power after Kennedy's assassination that he will not be the president who lost Vietnam. Ultimately, President Johnson decides that they have to intervene militarily. And the decision is made to um, start with air power. Operation Rolling Thunder was a mistake because it did not take into account the psychology of the North Vietnamese. They explained the bombing as an obvious attempt by the U.S. to take over control and act just as the French had acted many years before. The anti-war movement had kind of gone through what I think of as being a period where folks in the movement thought, well, we can just convince our leaders that there's been a mistake, you know, that this was a terrible idea, and if they knew everything we knew, they would realize the errors of their ways. But that wasn't working. In late 67, General Lewis Moreland says, we have reached an important moment when the end begins to come into view. Meanwhile, the North Vietnamese are planning what becomes known as the Tet Offensive. The message of the Tet Offensive to the American administration and to the American people is, yes, unless you continue, not only continue at this level, but unless you sink more into this war, you're not going to win. Tet represented a defeat for Lyndon Johnson. In the aftermath of Tet, he comes to a decision that he's not going to run for re-election in 1968. Nixon was elected in a 68 election, sort of intimating that he had a secret plan to end the war. In fact, he didn't have a secret plan. He had some amorphous ideas about how to withdraw from Vietnam. Behind the scenes, I think you see a Nixon that has come to see Vietnam as an example of the limitations of American policy. And when he does articulate what will become known as the, the Nixon Doctrine. I think that doctrine is in fact an admission that there are limits to American power. When the Paris Peace Accords are signed with a ceasefire in place, it leaves all of those North Vietnamese troops still in South Vietnam. In mid-74, Nixon is embroiled in Watergate, dealing with a very confrontive Congress. U.S. military aid is reduced. Nixon, who made 31 promises that the United States would be there, for South Vietnam in early August finds himself out of office and disgraced.